Welcome back. We're here to look ahead to Saturday afternoon's Premier League match between Leicester City and Crystal Palace. Miles will start with Leicester sitting fifth in the table after that two to draw with Southampton. Yeah, it's incredible how they keep doing is it in another comeback um, point for them. I think there's seven points they've uh, rescued from losing positions now. Just when they get that momentum going, they're so hard to stop. Southampton looked to have the game in control at 2-0 up at half-time. Looked like Leicester were out dead and buried, but you can never count this Leicester side out. Vardy again inspired the comeback. Two more goals for him. Takes him up to nine for the season in the nine games, which is three more than anyone else, which when you consider Aguero got five in one game, that's it's quite a remarkable figure. It's six straight games he scored and now eight goals in that time. Just, just no stopping him at the moment. And for a while, I, was, I, I always considered Vardy, he's not the most talented player around, but his work rate makes him so hard for defenders to play against. And he, he's finishing these chances. So... You know, he's playing non-league football for Fleetwood Town a few years ago, but right now he's looking more than at home in the Premier League. You have to say he's worthy of his England place at the moment. And he's just taken up the mantle where Mahrez left off early in the season. Certainly did, yeah. I think Mahrez, you know, like you say, at the start of the season, he was the real star. And Vardy's really, yeah, like you say, taken the mantle there. And I certainly think that the difference between the two players, you mentioned Vardy's work right there, that's the real difference. And I think and you wonder why Mahrez, he's just, he hasn't started the last two games, I don't think, and he's playing so well at the start of the season and didn't really seem to lose his form at all. But Ranieri's opted not to start him in the last two. He came on uh, half time against Southampton uh, for, for Okazaki and he set up Vardy's equaliser, great through ball, perfectly weighted for, uh, for Vardy. And you think, why isn't he starting every single game? Because he's certainly probably the most talented player in terms of technical ability in the squad. but. Maybe I think if Ranieri's thinking about maybe defensively, Leicester have conceded 17 goals in nine games and perhaps the fact that Mahrez could be a bit of a luxury player, you know, he's a very slight player, doesn't offer you much, he won't work back too hard, he's not going to be very strong in the tackle, so maybe Ranieri thinks he's a luxury he can't afford at the moment, but you know, it's not exactly like him being out of the team's helped Leicester keep clean sheets, obviously conceding two against Southampton, so perhaps he might be come back into contention here, but he's a key player for them. He is, and I... I look at the fact that two different managers have left him out now. Pearson, he was in and out of the team under Nigel Pearson last season, and he is obviously the best player in terms of ability in that Leicester side. Obviously, Vardy's in the best form at the moment, but Mahrez, he's he's got the ability to win a match on his own with that skill he's got. We saw it at the start of the season, he was in fantastic form, the best player in the league for the first four games or so. I just wonder whether there's maybe a problem on the training ground, maybe he doesn't put ev everything into training if a couple of different managers have left him out despite that obvious ability, but you'll never know. But it's, it is a strange one that he's not starting every game because for me, he he is their best player and with him on the pitch, Leicester always looked like more of a threat. They certainly did against Southampton when he came on. But looking ahead to this game, this one's a tough one. We're going to talk about Palace's away form in a moment, but after this, they've got West Brom away, Watford at home, then Newcastle away, which are three games they'll fancy picking up three points from in each of them, after, um, the form they're in at the moment. So, sit in fifth place at the moment, can't see them dropping too far below that. No, and Palace coming to this game just a point below them uh, in sixth place after that 3-1 home defeat to West Ham last time. Certainly before that game it was billed as the game, you know, the two best away teams in the league, Palace and West Ham, been doing so well. Some some people picking West Ham to come come away with the points and they did so thanks to two late goals, wasn't it? Lanzini and Pae at the end and you know, Palace they had that man sent off to White Gale in the first half and it was always going to be difficult. It looked like they were going to hold out until the 88th minute and you know, the second goal, the, the key goal, the Lanzini one, that was quite unlucky the way, you know, clearance, he was just stood there in the box, hit his shin, cannon straight into the net and then Pae obviously finished it off with that great finish but you know, before that it was Kabai's penalty that got them level, I think his third straight penalty so he's obviously having no problems in the spot but the Gale incident really changed the game, didn't it? And Certainly, I think for me, you know, I think Klattenberg certainly could have given him a final warning as a tackle. You know, it was a, a bit rash, you know, the way he lunged in, but there wasn't loads of contact, sort of caught him on the top of the boot. And I think I think he could have given him a final warning there. But now that he's out for this one, you know, you wonder what um, Page is going to do up front because, you know, some games this season he's played, he hasn't really played with a natural strike. He's played Sacco, Balassi, you know, Anza Hart, all three of them up there. But I think Connor Wickham could be close to coming in back, uh, could be returning here. And Patrick Bamford, you know, hasn't really played at all this season, has he? I think maybe he could, get, he could give him a go in this one, but he's obviously not been too impressed on the training field or with the substitute appearances because he hasn't really played that much at all. Yeah, on that Gale red card, I think Klattenberg, he could have been lenient, but it would have been leniency, I think, for him. But you can see exactly why he gave the uh, the second yellow card. It was a mistimed challenge. I don't think there was any malice in either of them. I think it was the, the same enthusiasm that made him such a pain to the West Ham defence. But during his time on the field, that actually got him both yellow cards. But you can see why Klattenberg gave it a I don't think Padre can have too many complaints. He could have been lenient, but as I say, 
you can see why he gave it. But looking ahead to this one, Palace will be happy to be away from home again, as we mentioned, so much better on the road. Nine of the, they've won nine of the last 12 Premier League away games, which is a fantastic record. Won nine of 61 before that, so just goes to show how much of improvement Pardew has done uh, in, in his time at the club, but particularly away from home. When we talked about the players, the sort of players they got, the Balassies, the Zahars, and exactly why they're such a threat away from home. Looking ahead to um, the next few games, they've got Man City away in the League Cup, Manchester United at home, and then Liverpool away. Tough games, and they'll be happy to still be in and around the European places after that run, but the way they're playing at the moment, particularly away from home, they'll be confident of um, giving those big boys a test. Certainly, yeah, but do you see them giving Leicester a test here? What's your score prediction? I do see them giving them a test and just Palace's away form is too too good to ignore at the moment. Leicester, they like to play open, there's always goals in their matches and I think Palace have got the tools to hurt them. I can see another high scoring game it always seems to be with Leicester so I'm going to go for 3-2 Palace. 3-2, yeah. I fancy Palace to score 3 as well but I don't think Leicester will be as close this week. I think Palace might prove too strong and I'm going to go 3-1 away win. So both picking Palace to win this one. Thanks for joining us.